Good evening, folks, and a hearty welcome to our drive-in theater. We have a wonderful evening's entertainment lined up for you, one that will provide several hours of pleasurable relaxation and diversion for you and your family. What am I indebted for the honor of this call, Mr. Hellinger? How are you, sweetheart? Say, Ed, I caught that new epic of yours last night at a sneak preview. What, you mean a slight case of murder? Say, tell me, how'd you like it? Happy, it's a socceroo. As a matter of fact, I'm heading my list of best bets with it in next Sunday's column. Well, that's swell, coming from you, Hellinger. You know, I've been wanting to get into an honest-to-goodness comedy for a heck of a long time. My wife has seen me die in pictures so often, she was beginning to feel like a celluloid widow. Well, Eddie, I've always wanted to see you play a Damon Runyon story, because Damon paints the big town and the guys and gals of Broadway as they really are. And that's right down your alley. I had one look at that script, and I offered to do it for nothing. Well, almost nothing. <laughs> it's a grand idea for a picture, all right. It certainly is. Now, here's a public enemy who was forced to retire from the rackets and wants to become a, a social butterfly. The only difference is, from now on, Remy is legitimate. What's going to happen now? Yeah, how about well, that? Well, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna take care of every one of you guys. You're going to be salesmen. Salesmen? Only there's going to be a little change in our sales methods. Come on, boys. <laughs> So now this has always been the slot machine room. Now look, there'll be lots of people coming up here that are a cinch to take any one of these kids. So I don't want the best. I want the worst. Well, yeah, that's right. Now give me the ugliest and toughest little gazebo you got. I want to mold them, see? And here, folks, we have Douglas Fairbanks Rosenblum. You talk like you're announcing a bout. Hello, Douglas. Hi, Toots. Hey, does the old dame live in the house, too? <laughs> Great stuff, isn't it? That way, 40 grand bought the paper, says dead or alive. Yeah, for 40 grand, you'd ruin my social reputation. Ah. Somebody shot them, boss. Shot them? Yes, sir, right there in that room. You've got to get them out of here. I can't have people like that around my house. What would the neighbors think? What would Mary's fiance think if he came in while they were here? Say, hey, what would anybody think? I've been trying to be legitimate, and it ain't my racket. I don't know the rules, so I'm going to play my own game. Starting right this minute, I'm going to be illegitimate. Well, what's he done? He was mixed up in that truck hold up. Don't go in there alone and try to arrest my father. You'd better bring your whole state troop with you. I want a policeman.
gonna get our truck in there, pal. Just leaves it to me, chum. Anything else I can do for you? Yes! 
Leave me alone! <clears throat> Don't talk to me like that after all the hospital I've given you. Try to give you candy and nice fat juicy steak. I've waited on you with your hands and feet. Tried to tell you that there's plenty more girls, you don't have to worry about that. If I felt as bad as you, I'd go and drown myself. Stanley, you've given me an idea. What? I'm going to follow your advice. Good. And I... drown myself. Oh, wait a minute now. Listen, I, I was only kidding. This I... is no time for kidding. I know, but don't you think you ought to think it over? Have you ever been drowned I before? I have thought it... it over, and since Georgette has given me the air, I have nothing left to live for. Oh, don't be silly. What do you mean, I... don't be silly? This is a far, far better thing I do now than I have ever done before. Well, I... Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Stan. Good luck. Where are you going? Well, I don't want to get my name dragged into this. Yeah. What? What's this for? Now, when I count three, we'll both jump in. What have I got to jump in there for? I'm not in love. So that's the kind of a guy you are. After all I've done for you, let me jump in there alone. Do you realize that after I'm gone, that you just go on living by yourself? People would stare at you and wonder what you are, and I wouldn't be here to tell them? There'd be no one to protect you? Do you want that to happen to you? I never thought of that. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, Ollie. I didn't mean to be so dispolite. That's all right, Stanley. Let bygones be bygones. This is going to be easier than you think. Now move this over here for me. Are you ready? Goodbye, Ollie. Goodbye, Stanley. One. Two. Ollie. What? I just thought of something. Listen, you remember once you were telling me that when we passed away, we'd come back on this earth in some other form? Like a bird or a dog or a horse or something? Oh, you mean reincarnation? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Well, now that we're going to go, what would you like to be when you come back? I don't know. I've never given it much thought. I like horses. I guess I'd like to come back as a horse. Huh. What would you like to be when you come back? Oh, I'd rather come back as myself. I always got along swell with me. I you didn't... can't come back as yourself. Now, come on and stop wasting my time. another man and if I could meet him face to face but I to him would be nobody's business yes sir well advice is cheap maybe if you listen to my suggestion your problem will be solved what is your suggestion join the foreign legion what for to forget say that's not a bad idea Ollie 
better than jumping in here. You could forget and all that trouble. You're right, Stanley. Thank you, mister, for telling us. It was a pleasure. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. Sign you to your duties. Reveille at five, you dress quickly, make up your bunks, and get ready for inspection. Inspection until seven. Ten minutes for breakfast. You drill until one and march until four. What about lunch? You'll have that while marching. You have inspection until six. Fifteen minutes for mess, kitchen duties until ten, inspection until eleven, then taps. That is all. We have to do all that. You won't have time to forget. Why don't you tell him? Uh, we, how much do we get for all this work? 100 centimes a day. Well, that's not bad. Uh, how much is that in American money? Oh, American money? Well, it's equivalent to about three cents a day. Of course, it varies with the rate of exchange. Well, how much do we get for overtime? There ain't gonna be any overtime. If you think that you're gonna get that much work out of me for three cents a day, brother, you are crazy. Is that so? Absolutely. Yeah, and that goes for me, too. Because we don't work for less than 25 cents a day. Do we, Ollie? Uh, 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 uh. Goodbye. 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 Gee, I'm sure glad to get out of this joint. Me, too. Have you got everything? Uh-huh. Now, we'll go over to that competent guy and tell him we're through. And at the same time, I'll give him a piece of my mind. I don't blame you. Three cents a day. Ha! Left oh, turn. What? Left. Say, so what's the big idea of keeping us waiting? You know what? What? He's not here. Well, of course he's not here. Well, let's go look for him. Look nothing. I'll leave him a note. Oh, I wouldn't bother to leave him a note. Just leave him a P.S. Oh. Good enough for him. the note, Ollie. I said plenty, and if I could have spelled raspberry, I'd have told him a lot more. That'll learn him three cents a day. Right. Never during my army career have I been so grossly insulted. Just wait till I get my hands on him.
Saint Sam's January, April, June or July. No time, take no time to stay outdoors and spoon. Shine on, shine on, harvest moon for me and my gal. What time the train leaves for Paris? The sooner the better for me. Thank Say, what? which way to the depot? Just around the corner. Here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. Ollie, is that really you? Well, of course it's me. Gee, I'm glad to see you. <laughs>
fresh candies, the flavors you love. Assorted drinks, your favorite beverages. Hot coffee. Hot dogs, the way you like them. Ice cream, smoothly delicious. The show will start in seven minutes. Here's a choice of food and drink to satisfy anyone and everyone. You'll find something to please you to add to your evening's enjoyment. Something to please all tastes and age groups. Out of my eyes. Hey, Skinny. Hey, Skinny. Hey, Skinny! Hey, hold your horses, Muggs. I'm coming. Hey, hey! Hey, Danny. Hurry up, you don't get no breakfast. Keep your shirt on. I'm coming. Hey, wait till I tie my shoe. <laughs> Let's go, stupid. Don't aggravate yourself, Sonny. We gotta wait for Pee Wee. Oh. Hold this. Are you kidding? Will you hurry up, Pee Wee? I'm coming, Mud. You're out. I slipped on a banana. I'm throwing a Hey, what are we waiting for? We've been waiting for you. That's what we've been waiting for. Come oh, on. Let's go. Oh, hey. Come on, Annie. Wake up, Dusty. It's time to go to work. Come on, you. Come on, Don't forget, we gotta pick up algae. Yeah, I heard you the first time. What? Right, no battery? Come on, boys. How about a little cooperation? Oh, oh, come on. Uh, I guess so. Get the beer. Have it. Pull up the anchor. Let's go. Hey, hey, come on, boys. Hey, hey, come on, boys. Come on. Let's go. Hey, your motor's missing. What are you talking about? It's right there. When are you going to go to work with us? Nice corny suggestion. About the laziest guy I know. 
sure afraid you're going to find this airfield. Watch the bumps, will you? I knew you was going to do that sooner or later. Well, don't talk about it. Turn your old cradle right. back on the stomach. Come on. That's that. Woo! Hey, Muggs. You almost hit that statue. Yeah, it took you 30 seconds longer than it did yesterday. Can I help it if the wind was against me? Here, Denny. Here's your grub. I'll see you at lunchtime. Thanks. Hey, when are you going to break down and go to work for a change? Go to work? Yeah. That's for saps. I never work. I'm retired. Tired sap. Hey, there's the whistle, boys. Come on, don't be late. Don't worry about me, because I'm free as a bird. A bird, huh? You're a cuckoo. Yeah, that's right. You want to give you the back of me hand? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> Go on, you little ants. Get to the plant. That's it. Ants in the plants. Longfellow. Hmm. Better have that fixed. Kind of spoils the appearance of the car. Dad. Oh, Algie, sorry I missed you at breakfast. Yes, I rolled over, got an extra 40 winks, but I wasn't late. What is your visit, a personal one or is it business? Well, a little of each. I thought it was awfully nice of you to give the fellows a break, and I thought I'd come in and see how they were coming on. Most satisfactory. It only proved that all they needed was an opportunity. Well, what about this other boy, this, this, uh, oh, suds or bugs or whatever you call him? Oh, you mean mugs. I'm afraid he's hopeless, Dad. You see, mugs and work don't get along very well together. But he's an awful nice guy. Uh, maybe it's just as well. I don't want anybody around here who just does their job. This is a business for people with ambition. And a little patriotism wouldn't hurt either. You having trouble, Dad? No, son. The only thing we have to worry about is sabotage. Flying ambulance. Hmm. What do they think of next? What do they do with this thing? Rescue pigeons? It's a flying ambulance. I can read that, but what's the gag? Who wants to go 5,000 feet up in the air to have the tonsils yanked out? The idea is simple. On numerous occasions, it's vitally necessary to fly a sick or injured person from one city to another. Supposing you had concussion of the brain. Supposing I had a brain? Well, all right. Now that we're supposing, the nearest brain specialist is about 500 miles from here. The ordinary plane isn't equipped to get a patient in your condition there safely. What do you mean in my condition? What are you insinuating? Well, all right. Let's take off. I'll have my head examined. Oh, but you haven't a brain concussion. Oh, don't let that worry. I'd pick up things just like that. Nice layout you got here. Thank you. Have a seat, Muggs. Think I will. Besides being able to make a patient comfortable, we're equipped to do minor operations. Uh-huh. Dr. Nagel has spent a young fortune to equip this plane. It has everything. So I notice. Who is this Nagel character? Well, he's one of the most eminent physicians in this city. And a great humanitarian. You're giving this guy a terrific build-up. You don't happen to be in uh, L-O-V-E with him, do you? I admire Dr. Nagel very much, but my heart's up there. Test pilot, huh? One of the best. Well, that lets me out.
Understand it, Dad. The foreman personally checked the plane only ten minutes before Tom took her up. It's a clear case of sabotage, and how to combat the situation is beyond me. The plant is well guarded. I have secret servicemen working in every department. It's like fighting an invisible foe in the dark. Hey, lay off, Muggs. What do you want me to do? Starve to death? I'm practically a skeleton now. Go on, somebody else. Take it easy, Muggs. I'm taking it easy. Hey, why don't you bring your own lunch? Get the trouble, you fellas. Don't I share everything I got with you? Gary, yeah, well, you never got anything. I share it, don't I? Ah. Yeah, you better take it back before you get nervous and digest it. Hey, you double crosser. <laughs> what, no potatoes? That's all, brother. Hello, Muggs. Hi, Algie. My father asked me to thank you for what you did and suggested that if you should decide to go to work... Oh, I... don't mention that word while I'm eating. How's that guy, that pilot, uh, Tom Lawson? Oh, he's all right. He ought to be out of the hospital in a day or two. It's a clear case of sabotage. Sabotage? I like mine with mustard. Oh, it's not funny, Muggs. Burning factories and planes, endangering lives. Wake of foreigners, huh? Well, that's the peculiar part of un-American activities, Danny. The most vicious offenders are often born in America and just don't realize what they're doing. Gee, I got the solution. Why, if they like the country they're working for so much, why not send them back there? How are you going to catch a bunch of rats like that? Say, maybe we could catch them with a piece of cheese. Well, seriously, Muggs. Uh? I assure you I don't want to speak to my father. I told you, son, I don't want to work. Besides, I'm going into humanitarian business. Humanitarian? I heard of vegetarians. They only eat vegetables. But a humanitarian, you mean you eat... You see, it's morons with his mentality he wants to work. Us humanitarians, we use our noodles. You see that? Come on over, I'll explain something to you. Well, here she is. Okay, so it's an airplane. So what? And an ambulance, too. Well, what's this got to do with what we was talking about? Well, you see, the idea is very simple. On numerable occasions, it is essential to move sick people from one city to another in a hurry. Now, suppose you had a brainstorm. You know, if I didn't know you was crazy, well, you'd have me crazy, too. Ignorant. Now, you see, these specialists sometimes live as much as 500 miles apart. There's nothing in between except maybe a horse doctor. So I says to myself, something must be done for these poor, gullible invalids. You uh, feel all right, don't you? Sure is a nice gadget. Uh, is it uh, yours? What do you think? Come on, look it over. Let's see this. I'll take it all in, boys. Boy, is this something. Man, this is a killer. I'd never have thunk it. Say, you must have gone to a great deal of expense out with this plane, Muggs. Oh, yeah, it cost a couple of bucks. Besides being able to make patients very comfortable, we're also equipped to do minor operations. Hey, Skinny. What? Put that down. You want to be fumigated? I'd never have thunk it. Why didn't you tell me about this gadget? Well, I want to keep it for a little surprise. But I'm cutting you in. From now on, you and me is just a couple of humanitarians. Thanks, Muggs. Hey, we're going to need a pilot and a sawbones, aren't we? I took care of that this morning. I went out and signed up a very famous physician. And besides that, he's pretty eminent. Oh, what kind of a gas mask? Hey, what's this? That? Well, I'll tell you, that's a scrap of satometer. Huh? Thermometer. Oh. Hey, how do you get a thermometer like this in your mouth? Oh, it's for testing blood pressure. You see, you wrap this around your arm, press the bulb a few times, that tightens it. Then you simply look at the recorder and you can find out what the blood pressure is. Just like I thought. You'll never learn nothing. Oh, 
Doctor, I'm very anxious to see your flying ambulance. Well, there's, there's nothing so very wonderful about it, Forbes, but I think it will serve its purpose. This way, gentlemen. Hey, look, the muffler. Yeah, it's nice and warm, soft. Hey, look at Skinny. He's hanging himself sitting down. Hey, you sap, you're supposed to put that on your arm. Anybody knows that. <coughs> Gee, thanks for saving my neck. We wasn't worried about your neck. We was worried about the machine. It looks very interesting, Doctor. Thank you all. Well, what can I do for you guys? Why, we'd like to inspect this plane. Got a pass? I am Dr. Richard Nagel III. Now listen, I wouldn't care if you was July the 4th. Besides, you're a little too late anyway. Too late for what? We already got a doctor. If you got any references you'd like to give to me, though, well, uh, if we get rushed, I'd be glad to give you a buzz. Don't you understand? I'm Dr. Nagel, owner of this plane. Oh. What? Well, I think I can explain, doctor. You're young Reynolds, aren't you? Yes, I met you in my father's office. Might I ask what you and this person are doing in my ship? Uh, we just came to look it over with a couple of friends of ours. Then I'll have to ask you and your friends to get out and stay out. Muggs? I'm busy. Hey, Muggs! Dr. Nagel is here, Muggs. Ah, uh, just tell it. Dr. Nagel! Hey, fellas, beat it! Hi, Doc. No rough stuff now, understand? Do you want to see me? You have absolutely no business on my property. And if ever I find you here again, I, uh, I'll have you arrested. Right, all right, all right. Keep your shirt on. Wouldn't fit me anyway. Should I slug him one, Monks? Spoil that manicure? I'll be silly. <laughs> Come on, we got to go to work anyway. Hey, Squirrel. Uh, there's... Come, gentlemen, I, I, I'll show you the front of the ship. Hey, fellas, look at Scruno. Must be something he ate. You want to see me, Mr. Reynolds? Come in, Danny. Yes, sir. Hi, Algy. Hello, Danny. Sit down. Yes, sir. Danny, I want you to know that you've made good. You worked hard, conscientiously, and I have every reason to believe that you can be trusted. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. My work's just cinch. Well, the foreman tells me what he wants done, and I do it. And while I don't want to seem, well, melodramatic, uh, certain factions have been successful in learning all about them. Why, we must have spies right in the plant. The profession of a spy has lost its dignity and glamour. Today, they're just ordinary common thieves, gangsters. I wish there was something I could do about it. There is. And as you boys might say, I'll give you the lowdown. Yes, sir. Plans have been stolen and flown to the border. In this envelope are supposed to be blueprints for a new bomb site. Now, through certain sources, Danny, It'll be made known that you're going to deliver this to our downtown office. And I have every reason to believe that someone will try to get them. There they are. I get the gag, Mr. Reynolds. I take these and let somebody swipe them from me. And I find out who does the swiping. Precisely. And I want you to know, Danny, that there will be a certain amount of danger attached to this assignment, too. Where do I take them? The address is on the envelope. And please be careful. Yes, sir. I will. Good luck, Danny. Thanks, Algy. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Good luck. Goodbye. Uh, I'll, I'll take care of it. Hi, Mugs. No, oh, they tied a can to you, huh? No, I got a temporary promotion. I'm kind of a detective now. You mean defective, don't you? Stop your clowning. I'm up to my years in mystery. Huh. You know, spies ain't what they used to be. 
They lost all their glamour and uh, uh, dignitaries. Well, don't let that worry. Your conditions are bad all over. I gotta get robbed any minute now. Kind of dangerous, too. Well, see you later. Hey, wait a minute. What's cooking? Not much. Well, maybe I better go with you. Those babies are plenty tough, you know. I can take care of myself. There's your ambulance. That's the first time I was ever cut in on a deal and cut out before I was even cut in. Could I help it if I got hallucinations? If you boys don't get off this ship, I'm gonna have you thrown into jail. Guy's no imagination, that's all. Wish I had him here now. I'd take him by the neck and break it off at the ankles. Uh, he must be gone by now anyway. Be a very easy matter for us to send whatever plans and messages we choose. Since we seem to be in a complimentary mood, Forbes, I must say you did an excellent job on that pursuit plan. It will take them several months to replace that model, Doctor. I have only one suggestion. In the future, I think you might do a much better job in being sure to fix the safety belt. No one will be suspicious of us when we have a patient to take to the border. Once there, no questions will be asked. Gentlemen, it's a perfect arrangement. Well, now what? I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Nagel was mixed up in his stolen plan stuff. Been using your imagination again, huh? I don't know. I heard him talking about flying to the border or something. And Reynolds said that... Uh, you're just trying to pin something on him because you don't like the guy. Leave me alone, will you? I gotta get held up. You can't be wrong all the time. Did you ever hear the law of averages? Excuse me. Nice breaks. Danny Graham. He works for Reynolds. How could you lose track of him? He left here to go to the downtown office and all you had to do was to follow him at a safe distance. Get me the police department. If anything's happened to Danny, I'll never forgive myself. He was such a swell kid. This is a mess, a terrible mess. Hello, police department. This is Mr. Reynolds speaking again. Any news of Danny Graham? Thank you. Nothing. Are these the plans that were taken from the boy? This is a blueprint of a ship that was manufactured eight years ago. Where did you get this information? From the same source. Your job would suggest that you get your information elsewhere. And the last item on your evening news broadcast is the mysterious disappearance of Danny Graham, an employee of the Reynolds Aviation Company. When I ask... I can't understand what happened. How could Danny just disappear? He must be someplace. Pardon me, Mrs. Graham, but we checked at all the hospitals and the police haven't a report of any accident. He'll show up. Sure he will, Mrs. Graham. Danny can take care of himself. Oh, Danny should be proud to have such pals as you boys. If I only knew he was safe. Yes, this is Mrs. Graham. No, I haven't any news. What? Muggs is missing too? Hey, that's why he left the car. Oh, yeah. Did you report it to the police? Oh, I wish I could say something to cheer you up. I don't know what to do, I'm so worried. What could have happened to them? We're going to go take a look around, Mrs. Graham, see if we can find Danny. Just a moment. If you hear any news, let me know right away, please. Sure, we will. Come on, fellas. Yes. Well, the boys are just leaving right now. They're going to look for them. I've looked every place. Me too, but I don't know where they could be. Well, man, I think we're wasting our time, Skinny. I didn't look anywhere. We might as well keep on looking. We can't go back and face Mrs. Graham. No, you sure can.
And just to think, I wouldn't give him any of my lunch. Man, I'll never get to look in Muggs' eyes when I didn't have no potato. Don't do that, man. Stop. Look. Hey, it's Muggs! How can you tell? He's wearing my shoes. Hey, look in one of those other barrels. Maybe Danny's in there. Easy, Ma. That hurts. Please, Danny. Now to lose your hair and eat easy lessons. I was so worried about you, Muggy. I'm even glad to see you in oh. any condition. Oh, who's winning, Ma? What is it, a tug of war? Hey, I got an idea, Mrs. Graham. Why don't you cut his hair off? Get lost, will you? I'll go. It's Mr. Reynolds. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, fellas. Hi. Hi. You, you'll pardon the intrusion, ladies, but I was anxious to learn the result of what happened. But won't you sit down? Uh, thank you, no. I'll only be here a moment. What's that? I'm getting a permanent. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Danny. I should never have exposed you to such danger. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, forget it, boss. What's a little clunk on the head? Don't be so modest. I got clunk, too, and I wasn't even playing. Oh, that must be Muggs. Oh, Muggs, Dad. Oh, that's right. Muggs. How are you, Muggs? Hi, Reynolds. Tell me, Danny, did you have the opportunity to see what they look like? No, I didn't. They snuck up behind us, and next thing I remember, I was upside down in a barrel. You didn't have a chance to see them, eh? No. You're supposed to be a pretty smart guy, ain't you, Reynolds? Don't start any trouble, Muggs. You've been getting pretty aggravated because some slugs have been stealing some blueprints from you, haven't you? Oh, why, well, yes. Well, just supposing maybe somebody spent a lot of money so they could just build a plane to go back and forth to the border. Would that be incriminating? Well, it might be. Uh-huh. Hey, you mean the doc? Yeah, yeah, I mean the doc. And it ain't just because he kicked me off his ship, either. He means Dr. Nagel, Dad. Oh, oh. I guess we'd better be going. So, man, ain't you interested? Uh, no, Muggs. I'm afraid you base your suspicions on wishful thinking. I happen to know Dr. Nagel, and I'm very familiar with the irreproachable reputation that he enjoys. Those are just the ones to look out for. Those irreproachable guys. I'm afraid, Muggs, you have too much leisure. You'd better be going, Algy. I'm very happy the boys are unharmed. Good night, ladies. Good night, Mr. Reynolds. Hey, what's the idea of talking to Mr. Reynolds like that? Ain't you got no manners? I didn't say nothing to him. Listen, you call up that Nago guy, see, and you make an appointment with him for tomorrow morning. Call up the doc? What for? Because you're gonna be a very sick boy. Am I? What am I supposed to have? Did you ever have your appendix out? He ain't gonna carve me up. Oh, well, we'll think of something. That's what I was afraid of. Hey, go on, coming. Hi. Hello. We got an appointment with the doc. I'm so glad to see you. I haven't had a chance to thank you for saving Tom. Hey, that was nothing. I do little things like that. But you see, the reason we come up here was about Danny. He ain't feeling so good. Oh, what's wrong with Danny? Well, he's got a couple of symptoms. Symptoms? Symptoms of what? Well, uh, just symptoms, you know. Uh, colic, I think it is. Yeah, it's settling my left foot. You gonna take my uh, pulse? Please be seated a moment. Sit down. Pardon me, lady. Pardon me, lady. Pardon me. Yes, Miss Munson? You have an appointment with Danny Graham. Sorry, but I neglected to put it in your book. All right, Miss Munson. I'll tell you when I can take him. Danny Graham. Anything wrong, doctor? No, I don't think so. I wonder where I heard that name before. Danny Graham. Well, isn't that the lad we borrowed the blueprint from? Yes, I, I think you're right. I wonder what he wants. You gentlemen will excuse me. Certainly. Miss Munson, I'll see this Danny Graham now. You may go in now. Swell. 
Hey, you going this way? Well, you okay, I'm sick. Lay you off. You wanted to see me? Yeah. Sit down, please. Yeah. By the way, weren't you among the boys who inspected my plane yesterday? Yeah, yeah, that's us. Well, I'm sorry if I appeared a bit irritable at the time, but I, I was with two very important gentlemen and, uh, well, I was a bit surprised to find you there. You mean you ain't sore? Of course not. And it won't bother you if we look your ship over again? On the contrary, I, I very much appreciate your interest in my enterprise. Which one of you is Danny Graham? I oh, am. Yeah. What seems to be the trouble, Danny? He has, uh, he has a little colic. Yeah, that's right, I got the colic. It uh, settled in my left foot. Oh, that's too bad, Danny. But I think I can give you something to relieve that. Sit down, what are you scared of? He ain't getting his tools, he's just gonna give us some medicine. But I ain't hungry. Oh, the colic's all gone, Doc. I, I don't think I'm gonna need any of that stuff. Well, we'll just give you a little to make sure. Open up. It's awful. What are you scared of? What are you scared of? That won't hurt you. It's good for you. It relaxes you. See that? It's great. Okay. I still don't like it. That was very nice of you, Doc. Do we pay you or the cashier? Oh, there'll be no charge, boys. I'm very happy to have an opportunity to make up for being so rude to you yesterday. Hey, you're not such a bad guy after all, Doc. Now, do you operate? Upon occasion, yes. Well, that's swell. I'll send you over a nice knife sharpener. Come on. That one was on the house. Be seeing you. Nothing to be alarmed about, gentlemen. Just a couple of fresh kids. <laughs> I don't think they'll pay me another visit. Not for a little while, at least. You know, I think I had that guy pegged on. Sure. Just because he kicks us off his plane, you think he's a spy. Yeah, that's where my institution works. You know, that's the way I think. I can't do nothing about that. Boy, he sure fell for that collar gag, didn't he? <laughs> what a chump. Don't kid yourself. He's pretty smart. You gotta be the car people up and put them back together again. Getting hot, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess the humility is getting a little low, ain't it? Either that or it's the heat. Yeah, yeah. Guess it must be the heat. Hey. Hey, wait for me! The colic was just a plain old stomach ache. That well, guy's got to be wrong sometimes. Sure, but you take advantage of it. Uh, see you at lunchtime, pal. You'll have to find me first. I just got to remember to have that thing fixed. Getting seclusive? What do you mean seclusive? I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, you've been looking for me. I haven't seen you since I dragged you up the car. That ain't my fault. 
You want to hide? If you don't want to see me, don't hide. What are you getting tough about? I ain't getting tough, that's all. Well, don't don't start something you can't finish. I ain't starting nothing I can't finish. Don't worry about me. What what, what do you want to beef about? Huh? What, what's your argument? What do you get so hot-tempered about? I'm not hot-tempered. Don't push me. All I said was, where's your hide? Look out! That's what you want to do. Muggs! Danny! Help! Peewee! Hey, what's the matter with you? What happened? Grab that end of the wink! How's Pee Wee, Mr. Reynolds? The boy is injured internally. Needs an immediate operation. I know a specialist up north who can do it. Can we fly him there, Dad? We haven't a plane available with a berth. He'd never make it. What about the flying ambulance? If we can get Dr. Nagel's permission, yes. We'll get it. You fellas get Pee Wee in that plane. We'll get the permission. Come on, Danny. Is the doc in? Yes, but he's busy. Listen to wait. Hey, Doc, we want to use your flying ambulance. Would you mind waking outside? A pal of us was hurt. He was hurt bad. Yeah, if we don't get him to a specialist today, why, he's liable to croak. I'm terribly sorry, and I appreciate your position, but I've made other plans for the ambulance. Good luck, Doc. He's a friend of ours, and he got hurt trying to save us. You can't let a guy like that down. Isn't that what you built that thing for, to fly sick people back and forth? Oh, all right, all right, take him out to the plane. He's there already. Yeah. What? Thanks, Doc, you're a small guy. And I thought he was a spy. <clears throat> Oh, I'm glad you could make it, Tom. Everything happened so quickly, Dr. Nagel couldn't locate his regular pilot. The lad's a friend of Muggs. That's enough for me. You are ready to shove off? Yes. How is he? About the same. We're going with you. to keep you company. Hello, fellas. You're gonna beat this rap kid. You just got it. Who's the toughest kid you know, Danny? Pee-wee is. Sure, that's right. You ain't gonna fall back on a reputation like that, are you? I'm fighting. Honest, I am. Stay a moment. How's he doing? Better than could be expected, Muggs. I brought you some flowers. Yeah, and I brought you some candy. Thanks, fellas. Who's the toughest guy you know? You are, Pee Wee. Be certainly. Certainly, there's no doubt about that. Nothing can put you down, pal. You'd better rest now. I'm certain Pee Wee is out of danger. We can fly home in the morning. That's swell. Are you sure he'll be all right? Yes, and he'll have the best of care. Now, if you'll excuse me. What else can we do? Hey, give him a little kiss for me, will you? You know, love's a funny thing. I thought I was in love once. Yeah? Yeah. She was a waitress. Boy, how she could flip hot cakes. Sometimes throw them ten feet in the air and catch them. Were they buckwheat cakes? What difference does it make? Then they're just harder to flip. They squish them. You, you ain't got no sediment, no, no romance. I ain't, huh? Listen, Sonny, I've had my day. I went out with a girl there once. She was a little manicurist. Used to hang out in Benny's ice cream parlor. You mean Maisie? Yeah, Maisie, that was the girl. I thought she was Benny's girl. She was. Some kiss. Hey, Lloyd, get away from that crowd. Hey, look. What's that? It's a piece of blueprint they make planes from. It is. Hey, what would this be doing here? Unless if they were flying planes to the border. Maybe you've got something there. I always did suspect that Nagel going around giving people a fish eye. Let's play this thing smart. Go out and get that girl. And how? This is what the 20s do when they get accustomed.
sit down, will you? Was you on this plane when it took off yesterday? Yes. Why? Where'd you go? I, I believe it was near the border. Don't you know for sure? I didn't ask where we were going, but the name on the airport was San Casanta. What'd you get down there for? We were flying one of Dr. Nagel's patients home. Why are you asking all these questions? I don't know. But there's one thing we've got to find out. Did anybody meet the patient at the airport? Of course. An ambulance from the San Jacinto Hospital. You ever see that before? Never mind. San Jacinto Hospital, huh? San Jacinto Hospital. He said he thought you were a spy. Is that it, Doctor? Yes. Well, this boy had suspicions that you were engaged in certain activities. He still has them, regardless of what he may think of you personally. This bad weather, he'd have to come in on a beam. I've spent a great deal of time and money in the flying ambulance. Gentlemen, we have no alternative. Do you really think this girl is mixed up in it? I'm the only one that's mixed up right now. But I'm gonna work on this thing until I straighten it out. You what? This is different. I'll be working for the government. You use your brains, not your hands. What brains? Hey, we're running in the clouds. They ain't got no silver linings either. So the uh, boys put you through the third degree, eh? At least the third. It's getting kind of thick, Helen. Huh? I think we'd better go in on the beam. WPML. Nagel ambulance plane coming in on the beam. Nagel ambulance plane calling airport six. Nagel, ambulance plane, calling airport six and coming in on the beam. Coming in on the beam. I can't see nothing but nothing. I think we're losing altitude. Maybe we're gonna win. Nagel plane, calling airport six. Come in, please. Come in, please. Nagel plane, calling airport six. Come in, please. Come in, airport six. Come in, please. Come on, you better go into the cabin. What's the matter, Tom? Something's gone wrong with the beam. I'm going to try to make that opening and set her down. I think I see where he's going. Don't get excited, boys. Tom's going to try to set her down. Set her down? This is where I came in. This is where I get out. Just stay seated, boys, please. Hold tight. Will he be all right? When's he coming home? The chat of Pee-wee's all right. We got something else to worry about. Gee, I'm glad you made it, fellas. What's he you? Well, the man in the observation tower was found bound and gagged. He had to fly in without the beam. So what? Maybe somebody's trying to bump us off. Bump you off? Why, man, that's murder. Come on, fellas. We better go into a huddle. Come on. Tom Lawson is the most competent aviator. There isn't every man who could bring in a ship the way he did. You see those two boys in the middle of the crowd? The one who's doing all the talking and the one next to him? Yes. They're the ones who are in my office. The shorter one of the two is the one who made that remark. If you haven't any objections, Doctor, I'd like to make a suggestion. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. The doctor's flying stolen plants. It's as simple as two and two. That makes five, don't it? This ain't no lesson in algebra. Gee, fellas, maybe we ought to call the cops. Look, why not take my father into our confidence? He undoubtedly would have suggestions. Probably know what to do in a case like this. We don't need your father, I'm telling you. I got the thing all figured out. Maybe Algie's right, you know. We could tell his old man. Nothing doing. I'm going to show that guy I can do something with my leisure. You ought to do something with it. Say, so, you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if that doc was a sabotager, too. I wouldn't be a bit surprised myself. Just suppose he was standing over there. You know what I'd do? What? I'd take his clock and I'd cut. Your aim is atrocious. Thanks. He means bad. Yeah, uh, let me take a crack at that guy and knock his brains out. Oh, that oh. ain't so good either. Yeah, you hear that? That's hey, better. Get off of this pump, will you? Get it off the regular furniture. Cut it out. Well, that would not hurt nothing. Hey, look. Who was that? Hey, there goes the fifth column. Grab him. Grab him over there. I'm going this way.
Hey, Danny, you take Algy and go around the block that way. Hurry up. All right, come on, fellas. Did you see him? No. Say, hey, which way did he go? I don't know, but I think he went that way. He went that way, huh? I'm going this way. We'll be right back. Come on, fellas. Just made a little mistake. That fit column fella sure disappeared quick. But I think I know where I can get a line on Nagel anyway. Well, we could go up to his office and ask him if he's a spy. Stop clowning if that's what you're doing. No, I'd like to talk to Helen. Well, it strikes me that if Dr. Nagel is the man we're looking for, then the girl is probably in cahoots with him. Yeah. Oh, no, no, she's not. Don't forget, he tried to kill her, too. Now, I'd like to get her phone number. Well, that shouldn't be difficult. I imagine you could get her through the nurses' exchange. That's right. Why didn't I think of that before? Who's got a slug? Would a nickel do? Hello, Helen? Yeah, well, this is Muggs. Muggs, you know, a friend of Pee Wee's. What's cooking? She's eating out. Yeah, well, look, uh, we're working on a little case, a little mystery. It's about espionage. Yeah, you know, about spies and stuff. Well, we thought maybe you could help us out. Yeah, well, we're down in uh, Benny's ice cream parlor. Yeah, we want you to come down here about 15 minutes. Yeah, what do you mean, is it a nice place? We cottonize it. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Was she home? Nope. Line's busy. We wouldn't have called you here unless we thought you were on the level. It's incredible. I I've been with Dr. Nagel almost a year, and he hasn't shown the slightest evidence of being anything but a good citizen, and as I told you before, a most competent doctor. You remember us asking you about the uh, San Casano Hospital? Yes. Well, what? we called there. Long distance. Reverse charges. And there ain't no such place. What? Of course, there's a possibility that imagination is playing a great part in all this. However, the boys still feel that Dr. Nagel is using his ambulance plane to fly secret plans to agents near the border. Well, what do you want me to do? Is he flying any more patients? Yes, a man at 8 in the morning. Uh, where's he picking them up at? 1488 Orchard. Do you know him? Oh, yes. Mr. Forbes has been in the office many times. The doctor is sending him home, and he's calling on him at 7 in the morning to put on fresh bandages. How big is this, uh, Mr. Forbes? Stand up. Well, he's about your size. Hey, I don't have to get sick again, do I? Well, we've got to find out where he's flying, these guys. What'd you say that number was? 1488 Orchard. Come on. Why don't we think of some other way? I did enough thinking for one night. Hi, sweetie pie. Hi, Maisie. Uh, you'll have to excuse me. I'm a little busy right now. Oh, Benny won't be back for an hour. Well, just tell him I couldn't wait, will you? Well, this is it. Come on, let's go around the back. Well, Forbes, I guess we might just as well get it over with. Certainly, Doctor. bandages on somebody's head. That must be Mr. Forbes. If you sneeze, I'll pop you right in the head.
Well, Jack. Call me, Doc? Yes. Allow no one but the ambulance drivers in here. I know that. Lie down. Happy landing, Forbes. Thank you, Doctor. Hey, the doc's gone. There's some other guy in there. Well, come on, let's get in the Blitzkrieg. <laughs> look here, look, look. Be careful with that. I'm allergic. I hope you don't get airsick. That's fine. What are you doing here? Don't peep out of you and I'll knock you for a home run. You got any rope around here? I, I think you'll find some in the closet. Stay there. Take out that toy. Man. Come on, take it off before I knock you out from under it. That's hey, it. look, plants. Is there something here about a bomb site? Boy, oh boy. Dr. Nagel will kill me for this. Don't worry about it. You'll get a nice funeral. Hey, now I won't have to get sick, huh? Who's at the receiving end of this? I haven't the slightest idea. Take these plants and put them back in that and put them on your head. Well, pick them up as in with Nagel. Yeah, but who's going to pick me up? Sit down here. Sit back there. We're going to knit you a nice sweater. I don't think I got enough rope. Where's Jack? Jack stepped out. Let's go. I'll have your lunch set up. All set. Now all I gotta do is get on that plane. All set, George. Isn't Tom at the controls? Yeah, I'm a regular pilot. Oh. To you. Who did this? Hold still, I'll untie you. It wasn't my fault. The whole gang jumped on me. There must have been a dozen of them. I couldn't help it. Neither could I. Well, they held me up with a gun that long. <clears throat> Contact the ship and tell George to turn back. I'm afraid you're in for trouble, Danny. You're afraid? <laughs> I'm scared stiff. I'd still rather hit you right on an ice truck. A wireless on this plane? Radio phone. Just in case the doc tries to tip off that pilot. What's he gonna do? He's crazy! Calling Nagel Ambulance Plane. WPMF, come in please. WPMF, Nagel Ambulance Plane, back to the station calling. Come in please. WPMF, Nagel Ambulance Plane, back to the station calling. Come in please. There they are. It's about time. <clears throat> George? George, come in, George. George, come in, please. This is Dr. Nagel. Come in, come in. You're a lucky fella. You'll never know what hit you. Well, that pilot won't be getting any tip offs for a while. That's right. Who's going to run the plane? Who cares who's going to run the plane? The plane! Who's going to run Of all the stupid things I ever heard. 
later. Well, he stopped him from getting the message, didn't he? Take an ambulance plane. Come in, please. It's on the blink, Doc. I can't get it. Oh, well, contact San Cazenta. It's from Dr. Nagel. It's trouble, sir. The patient your ambulance is meeting is not Forbes. But treat the matter as though nothing had happened. You understand. Hi, Tom. Hi, fellas. Helen tried to get in touch with her before she left. What do you mean left? Hey, Nagel's a spy. Yeah, they're flying government plans. Mother Nagel's around the fifth column. Hey, now, wait a minute, wait a minute, boys. Uh, let me get this straight. What are you trying to tell well, me? Well, I think I can explain, Tom. You, you see, Nagel is using his ambulance plane to fly secret plans to agents near the border. Now, Danny substituted himself as a doctor's fake patient, and Muggs went with him. By doing all this, we hope to find out who's working with the doctor. And Helen went along? Yeah, she insisted. Oh, don't worry, Tom. Everything will work out all right. Did they fly south? Yes, but I don't know exactly where. Well, it's a chance in a hundred, but I'm heading for the border. Like company? Yeah, come on. I'm scared to ride in the airplane. Let me oh, get out of here. Sit down. There you go. Uh, well, just look out the window. You all right? Sit down. Take it easy. with you. thing is to get the plans. After that, we can take whatever measures are deemed necessary. Naturally, we'll have to abandon this place as soon as possible. Hey, they're coming down the road now. All right, you boys better wait in the other room.
ambulance with the boy. Okay, place him there on the couch. Then go back to the field and bring the nurse here. I trust you're feeling all right after your trip. Yeah. Idea, but they went down that road. There's the ambulance now. I'll replace these bandages with fresh ones. Of course, you realize there is no return trip for you. Now, wait a minute. I don't want to have any trouble with you. We're taking you back. If you are. What do you mean by we? The matter with you, don't you understand American? He said we. All right, give me those plans. Hand them over. Grab that chair. Hey, is that gun really loaded? Sure. Well, that's, that's a little different. Well, you want to play, eh? Hey, don't go. That way face is delicate. What's the matter no, with you guys? Get him out of here. We was only kidding about this oh, whole no, thing no, now. No, Maybe no, we no, ought to talk no, it over a little, huh? Yeah, listen, if we only had time, have it. Tom? Yes, dear. Some fun, eh? Yeah, man, some fun. Ah. No, I think I'm going to like working for you, Mr. Reynolds. I think you're going to like having me work for you. Yes, I think I will, Slugs. Ah, I mean, Mugs. <laughs> Well, you could have knocked me over with the steamroller when I heard that Muggs is actually going to work. I never had thunk it. I didn't either, but I was there when he told Daddy to take the job and to prove it, he's driving him to work this morning. Some class to Muggs, huh? Yeah. Hey, fellas, here he comes now. Look. Sabotage. Why? Why, you're saying no more. I quit. Corky does magic. I only do tricks. 
There's never been a magician like him. How long you been like this, kid? You never really told why you were here. Hiding. Wasn't that cheap in New York? You want success, but you're afraid of it. I figured I'd stop by here and ask you folks about you. I'm not afraid. Where were you living? What city? How many kids? I'm not afraid. I never expected to find you. I've loved you all my damn life. I won't be here! Hey. I was afraid of success. Like you said, I needed to get my hair on straight. And now you're fine? Sure, on account of Ted. I've known her ever since high school. I never figured I'd have a chance with her. Peggy Ann Snow, Peggy Ann Snow, please let me follow wherever you go. That you and me take her. I love Peg. Just the two of us. Now everything's changed. She believes me. A man appears after 15 years. Says run away with me. Don't do it. Oh, please, don't kill her. No, I can't do it! I won't do it! You can't me! Magic, a terrifying love story. Joseph E. Levine presents Magic, starring Anthony Hopkins, Anne Margaret, Burgess Meredith, Ed Lauder, distributed by 20th Century Fox. And now, folks, it's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. Please remember to replace the speaker and heater on the post when you leave the theater.